Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to working with an imported mold base. While Top Solid offers a wide variety of libraries, it is impossible to have everything always available within the solution. Because of this, we offer wizards and special functions that help you get to that finish line quickly, no matter where that finish line takes you. To begin with, what I'm going to do is look in my project here. In my project, I have a folder here called Imported Mold Base. And I have a folder there for it because I want to store this imported file in a specific place. So I'm going to right click on it, go to Import Export, and choose Import File with Conversion. Here I'm going to browse to the folder where I downloaded my mold base. I'll select the Parasolid file in this case, click Open. I do want to open it as an assembly, that's very important. I do want to translate attributes as well, this way colors and whatnot come across. And I'll green check mark. Now Top Solid is going to import and recreate that assembly within the Top Solid structure. So here's that imported mold base. Now I'm going to do a couple things like set transparency because I just like transparency. Why not? So I'll control select everything and I'm going to come here to transparency and maybe I'm going to set that to 70%. Perfect. Now the very next thing I need to do is figure out where the zero is. So whoever I downloaded this from, they have this designed about a zero. So I'm going to open up my Entities Manager here. Now, if you don't have access to your Entities Manager, you'll want to right-click on an existing manager, and you can activate it this way. Again, I can come over here and do it on this side of the screen. Makes no difference. Or you can go to the 7 pull-down menu, go to View, and load the manager that way. Within the Entities Manager, you're going to see your absolute frame. So if I hit the plus sign next to frame and hit the check mark here, you can see my absolute frame is active. Now, in this case, whoever designed this mold base they put their zero at the bottom of our ejector housing, and our Z0 is facing us right now. It doesn't make much sense. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create our mold zero. Now, to do this, I want to simplify what I see on the screen. So I'm going to window select like that, right mouse button click, and choose hide. And then I'm going to rotate this so I can just see my sprue. Next, I'm going to go to my construction tab. I'll go to my frame types and choose frame on plane. My plane is going to be the face of my B plate, or pardon me, my A plate. Next, my zero point is going to be right there. Finally, my extraction is going to be based off the absolute X in this case, but basically what we want is we want the X going across the length of the part. Finally, you can see the blue arrow here is pointing but to my Z positive direction. I can either double click on it, drag and drop it, or come here to invert it so that Z zero is facing up. Perfect. Now that I have my zero reference done, I can go back and turn on all of my parts. What's the simplest way to do that? Well, you can go to your parts list here in the entities tree, left click on that box once, left click again, and now everything's back on the screen. From here, I'm going to hit save once. It's always good to save while you're working. Next, I'm going to go to the tools pull down menu, go to functions, and I'm going to choose top solid mold wizards. Here is our mold base wizard. With the top solid mold base wizard, the very first thing it's going to ask you to do is select your zero. Now, before we actually do this, I want to point out one more thing. It's important that you have in your references top solid tooling. If you don't have top solid tooling referenced, the mold wizard won't work in this case. So I'm going to delete that out of my references just to show you how to add the references back. Select Top Solid Tooling to my list, green check mark, and now it's referenced in my project. Cool. So let's go back to this wizard. So we're going to go back to Functions, Top Solid Mold Wizards, Mold Base Wizard, and I'm going to choose that mold zero and hit the blue arrow for next. Now it wants to know what plate I want to describe. Notice I have my Hide button selected here. With Hide selected, as I select the plate, you see it disappears temporarily. You can always bring it back, but this way you know what you've selected. Once I've selected the plate, now I'm going to double click here and choose the type of plate it is, and that is a clamp plate. Now I'm going to go add another plate. This is going to be a core cavity plate. Perfect. Next plate, core cavity plate. Next plate, support plate. Next, rails. Next, now, maybe you don't call this an ejector uh, retaining plate. 
maybe you call it ejector base plate, or maybe you call it a pin plate. If you notice in the preview image, though, that pops up, it's highlighting in blue the plate in question. So I want the retaining plate for my pin plate. Perfect. Now we want the other one. I'm going to double click, and that's the base plate. It's important you get these right so that we put the ejector pins in the right places. Once you have everything described there, you hit the blue arrow. And now we get to describe the mold characteristics. For example, what's on the A side, what's on the B side, what's on the C side, or pardon me, C side, what's in the ejector housing. Now, on the A side, you'll notice I have hide selected again. This is so that as I select the components, they disappear. Now, to make selection easier, I'm going to rotate a little bit, and I can use my selection window to select across the objects that I want to put into the A set. I'm going to go to my B set and do the same thing, but here I'm not going to window select just yet because I don't want to get my ejector components, right? Because that goes in the ejector set. Maybe here I'll rotate across this way. I'm going to select a couple that way, a couple that way. Why not get all those at once as well? Finally, for the ejector system set, I can window select, window select, window select, window select. You'll notice I'm leaving the frames out of it because I don't want the frames to come along. Then I'm going to green check mark, and like that, I've described a mold base. Now what? Now you hit save. Now here, because one of the objects in here is a subassembly, it needs to update that. So let's update first, green check mark, and now hit save again, and now we've officially defined this as a top solid mold base and saved it. Now, if this was something you were going to use over and over and over again, you wouldn't keep it in your local project. You would build your own library of your custom mold bases, but that's for another video. Here, I'm going to leave this open. I'm going to switch back to my mold file. Now, here I have a mold already laid out. It's an eight cavity mold, and I want to include this mold base. All I need to do, go to my mold base inclusion command. Up here under manufacturer, just set it to nothing right here. If I set it to nothing, I see my mold base. And because I set the plates transparent, I can see how it's positioned. If I needed to rotate, I could rotate, but I don't. I'm just going to leave it at zero and green check mark. And like that, your mold base has now been included from that custom supplier. Just to show you, all your visualization tools work down here. If I turn off the A side, boom, now I see everything on just the B side. Maybe I want to turn off the B side, turn the A side back on. Cool. You get the idea. Moreover, all of your features will work. For example, if I go here to Core Cavity Process, I can go ahead and select my plates to process. It's got my default values in it, and watch. I'm going to click OK. And it's now cut the pockets in my A plate and my B plate for me. If I hide this, it's affected that imported plate with our automation. One last thing, let's go back to the B side, why not? And let's go stick an ejector pin in just for fun. So let's go to the ejector pin command. Oh, we have no manufacturers. Let's go to my references and reference a few manufacturers. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and reference, why not, DME Inch and Hasco. And now let's go ahead and add that ejector pin. Perfect, DME Inch, Hasco. I'm going to do this based on a sketch because, well, it's just fun to do it this way. And we'll say that that can be on that plane. Why not? We're going to look straight at this thing this way. And I'm going to create a couple quarter inch circles, but I'm also going to do this based on double mirror. Why not? It's easier this way. So I can put one there, put one there. And like that, I have four ejector pins ready to rock. I'm going to validate. And as you can see, there's your ejector pins being put in. And they're all being put into the right position. They're all being keyed because that's actually a 3D surface that it's being keyed to. The trimming is done. I'm going to go hit validate here. Now we're going to put in all the processes. So I can come in here and I can set, for example, the live travel I'm looking for. I want that to be a half inch. Maybe for this clearance here, I want that to be a 32nd. Maybe for this clearance here, I want that to be a 32nd as well. Maybe this clearance down here, we want that to be a 16th. Whatever, you get the idea. We're going to hit go, and Top Solid, of course, is going to do the rest, and the rest being put all the drillings in through all the plates of that imported mold base. And like that, you can see all of the drillings have been put in, so you can see the clearances there. If I go turn off these bottom plates, so let's just select them and hide them, you can see they've all been keyed, and everything's good to go.